So in this video, we'll be learning how to make scatter plots in three dimension. So we have already learned how to make scatter plots in two dimension and other kind of plots too. So if you want, you can check them out on my channel. So first, since I'm going to use matplotlib in this, I will import matplotlib.pyplot as pld. Okay. So um, now instead of writing whole matplotlib.pyplot each time in the code, it will become very tiresome process. So I have just imported this whole thing as PLT. Okay. And uh, I'll be using numpy also in this to create the data set. So for that, I'll import numpy as np. Okay. So I have imported both of them. Now I'll be first making my data set. Okay. So since this is a three dimension plot, I have to take three different data sets that will capture my X, Y, and Z axis. So for my X axis, like you can give any name to the variable, right? You can give anything like uh, months, dates, time, anything you can give. Here I'm mentioning it as X axis. So NP dot I'm going to make a range for my x1. So I'll give some random values. Okay. And this has become my first data set. And for the next data set, let me take a sign function. And for the next data one, let me take a cost function. All right, so with this, my three data sets are ready that I can uh, just put it on my graph. Now, the next thing that I'm going to do is I'll create the figure of my plot. I won't plot the points right now. I'll just create the background and the outer structure of it. So for that, I'll take figure is equal to plt dot figure. And then in this, you can, uh, you can see that there will be numerous kind of, uh, you know, um, parameters that you can add to this figure. So the first parameter which I'm going to use here is the figure size parameter. Okay, so this fixed size is what you write for that. And equal to, let me give it as something like 10 comma 7 maybe. Okay, so you can just adjust the figure size accordingly, uh, however you want. The second parameter that I'm going to put here is the face color. So face color is nothing but it is like the background color of the plot. Okay, so you can assign different colors to just make it look a more neater and more presentable. So let me just give the face color as coral over here. Okay, so here I've created my basic uh, plot figure. Now I'm going to take AX and I'm going to plot it. Okay, so for that I'll write plt.axis. So that's the reason I took it uh, matplotlib.pyplot as plt because if I don't take it like that, then I have to write matplotlib.pyplot.axis. So it will become a very tiresome process. So that's the reason I took that shortcut. And then in this brackets, I'll write projection equal to 3D. So what I mean by this is that I'm trying to tell the spider to the compiler that I, what I want to make is a 3D structure. And then I'll reference this AX and I'll write AX dot set underscore face color. Okay. So now you might be thinking, why am I taking the face color once again? So I'll show you once I run the output because we will have two different areas to, you know, color in our scatter plot. One will be the outer part and one will be the inner part. So this one for outer part. Now let me pass a color called ivory. In this okay so let me just run it and show you all right so this is as you can see is my basic structure of the scatter plot this is those three dimension area in which I will be plotting those points so my basic figure has been created and you can see that we got here two colors okay uh, the inside color and the outside color so that's the reason I gave the face color two times 
okay so you can change it accordingly you can put anything like red green blue whichever color you feel like okay now time to allot the points on this so for that i'll take scatter underscore plot okay i'll just assign it to this and then i'll reference again the variable ax and then i'll take ax dot scatter ax dot scatter 3d okay now this is the way I will try to assign the values of the scatter plot. So first thing what I'm going to do is I'm going to pass three parameters which will take the place of my x, y and z axis respectively. So these were the three data sets x, y and z that I made. And now I'm going to pass those data sets in this so that they take place of those x, y and z axis. Okay, so I have passed three data sets and now I'm going to assign color. To my scatter plot so let me just give the color as red all right and then uh, you can you know give some color map also so in order to give color map you can use this cmap term and then in that let me just give the color map as autumn okay so this is how you will plot your scatter plot so this is the output for that. Now you can see I've got the numerous points which basically represent my X, Y and Z uh, data sets. But you can see that uh, these points, they have some kind of transparency in them. Like some points are darker, some points are kind of transparent. So to avoid this uh, and to get some kind of uniformity, you have a parameter which is called as depth shade. So what you do in this is that you just need to write depth shade equal to false okay so right now my depth shade is on as for this output which i got just now my depth shade is on so it means that i have you know i have got some variance in the depth of the color there is some transparency in it so in order to avoid the transparency in order to get a uniformity i'm going to put it as false because this is boolean so i'll just put it as false and that's it. You can see that this was my previous output and this is my new output. So I have made the depth shade as false and it has become uniform. There is no transparency in it. All the dots are uniformly colored. Okay, so I have plotted the points. Now, if you want, you can um, give a color bar also to your scatter plot when you assign multiple colors to it. So for that, it's very simple. You just need to write plt dot color bar. And in this, I'll pass this scatter plot because that is where I need to assign the color color bar. And when I run it, this is my output, right? So you can see I have got a color bar also towards the right. All right. So this is how you can assign a basic structure to a scatter plot. Now, apart from this, you can see that since it is like in X, Y, and Z dimension, but suppose you want to view it from a different dimension, from a different orientation or a different angle. So for that, you can adjust the angle also. Now for that, we have the syntax as we'll reference AX once again, and then we'll write dot view underscore in it. And in this, we are going to pass two angles. First one will be the angle of elevation. Suppose I'll pass two angles 0 comma 0. And both of these angles will be in degrees, they are not in radians, okay? So the first angle uh, will be the angle of elevation and the second angle is the azimuth angle, okay? So when I pass it like this, you can see that the orientation will change. Now let me run this. Alright, so you can see here that the orientation has changed. Now both my angle of elevation and my azimuth angle has become 0, 0 degrees. So this is how I got the orientation. So similarly, you can like change the angles of your plot and you can view it from different angles. Suppose I change my angle of elevation to 45 degrees and then I run it. All right, so you can see here, I got this 45 degrees elevation. So with the help of this, you can view your scatter plot from different orientation or from different sides. All right, now with after this, you can see that now we have got points. Suppose you want to join these points with the help of a line. 
suppose you want to get something like a line graph kind of thing but in three dimension so for that you just need to reference ax once again and you write ax dot plot 3d and then you need to pass those three parameters those three data sets which you have assigned and those three data sets which i gave here was x y and z okay now let me just run it so you can see that you can see there's a line which is visible that is joining all the points of the data set so for that it was as simple as this you just reference ax once again and you write dot plot 3d and then you just pass those three data sets in the brackets like how we used to create a 2d plots you know uh, in that if you want to create a line chart or something you just write plot and then in the bracket you need to pass the values so here since it is a 3d structure we will write plot 3d so that is how you can uh, give lines also to it now if you ask me which is the x y and z axis in this diagram then it is very difficult to say because I, I'm not sure which one will be the x, which will be the y, which will be the z axis, right? So for that, I have another parameter where I will give labeling to my x, y and z axis. So for that, you just need to write ax dot set. You will reference ax once again. Okay, ax dot set underscore x label. Okay, since I'm going to do the labeling for x axis. Now in this, let me just write, you can give anything in the within the quotations, any name you can give. Suppose I want to name it as x-axis. Then, okay, so similarly for y and z also I can do. Suppose I'll label, I'll do it as x dot set y label, then it will go for y. And similarly, I can do x dot set z label. So it will go for z axis. And I'll just change the name here. I'll make it z. And here I'll make it y. Okay. Now when I run it, you can see that the size is small, but you can, I hope it's visible that the x, y, and z axis have come. So here you can see that this side on the right is my x axis, then on the bottom you can see the y axis and on the left the z axis is visible, right? So like this you can give the labeling to a different axis so that understanding the data points will become much easier. So this is how you can um, plot a basic um, scatter plot. But uh, as you can see this image which I got right on the, my right side is not an interactive one. I cannot rotate it and I cannot see the different dimensions. So for that, uh, if you want to change, uh, if you want it to be a more interactive plot, then you, in Spider, you have an option called preferences. You can see over here, uh, this is the option, which is my preferences option. So when I click on it, uh, in this, I will get an option called Python console. Okay, now when I go to this Python console, I have all these options. Okay, the display, graphics, startup, and so on. So I'll just go for the graphics part. And in this, you can see this section over here which shows the graphics backend. So right now, the backend is inline, which means that my output will be displayed like this in the form of a 2D uh, on the right side. But I don't want it like that. I want it to be more interactive. So for that, I'll choose this Qtify option. And I'll go for OK. OK. Now I have set that thing. Now I'm going to again run my program. All right. So here you can see you have got the structure over here. Now this is a more interactive structure. With the help of your mouse, you can just rotate it and see the different dimensions or the different angles over here, which was not possible in the previous outputs which you got. So if you want it to be a more interactive structure, then you just need to go to preferences. In that, you need to go to the Python console and there go for the graphics option. Okay, so you can see we have got here a more interactive structure, right? So this is how you can make your scatter plot by using data sets. Now, suppose you're someone who wants to use a particular CSV file uh, or a particular data frame to make the scatter plot, then I'll show you how to do that one also. So let me just go to this file. So here I have 
already imported a CSV file. Okay, I have downloaded a CSV file and have imported it from my system. Now, in case you don't know how to create a CSV file and import it to your spider, then I have made a separate video on that too. You can just check it out on my channel or I'll give you the link in the description box too. So this is my data structure and I'm going to use this. I'm going to use the columns from this. Okay, the columns has got different values and I'm going to use the values from the columns to plot the scatter plot. So first I'll write plt dot figure and then I'll just pass the parameter fix size this time. Let me pass in size 10 comma 8 something like that and then I'll reference AX once again. PLT dot axis and in this I'll again what is my basic syntax that is I'll give projection equal to 3D which basically tells that I'm doing a 3D structure over here and with referencing AX I'll write AX dot scatter 3D and then now I'm going to pass so how we did in the previous one was uh, see here is my previous code so in the previous one you can see that after writing AX dot scatter I the first thing which I did was passing the parameters for my x, y and z axis. So here since my parameters for x, y and z axis is in the form of this columns and which is in the data frame form. So for that what I'll do is I will write df when I'm dealing with data frames and then I will write the name of the column that will take the values of my x axis. So I had a column called x bar. Okay. Now I'm going to put that x bar over there. So that means the column x bar had some values and those values will now take place of my x axis. Similarly, I'll just give df and then I'll give y bar. And then df and z bar. So this x, y and z bar were the names of the column of the CSV file that I've imported over here. So those columns are basically going to take place of those values. The next I'm going to assign the size. For size also I'm taking a particular column from my data frame. And that column, the name of that column is price. And the next thing is color. For color also I'm taking a data frame. And the name of the column was color. So this here is my scatter plot. Now let me just run this. Okay, so you can see here this is my scatter plot that I've got after taking the values from that particular CSV file. But you can see here that the dots are pretty, the dots are pretty big. So in order to reduce the size of it, let me just here is my size parameter. I gave the price column as it is for the size. So let me just reduce it by dividing it with hundred. Right, so you can see here, this is a more balanced structure and you can understand where the points are and you can even rotate it and see from different dimensions, right? So this is how you make your scatter plots in three dimensions. So if you have any doubts, you can let me know in the comment section below. So thank you for watching and meet you in the next video.